Jesus Christ. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us rejoice in the Lord this day and rejoice in one another. Why is it that so many Christians ignore Christ and the words of our Lord Jesus Christ? Why is it that we claim his name but pay so little attention to the example that he set for us, to the commandments that he gave us, and to the words that he spoke to us? Listen to the Gospel reading today. And not unlike so many others, not unlike the 25th chapter of Matthew, to reach out to help other people, not for some kind of gain, not to accept the fact that you have enemies. Other people may consider you the enemy, but there's no reason why we as believers and followers of Jesus Christ should consider them to be the enemy. For we have one enemy alone. We have only the evil one. Satan is the only enemy of mankind. And those things which he inspires people to do. Brothers and sisters, we have no enemies in this world. People who are alienated consider people to be their enemy. But the great problem for mankind is alienation. It's alienation from God above all. Alienation from humanity, from true humanity. For the evil things that people do in the name of God or of Allah. And let's not excuse ourselves because Christians have done many horrible, horrible things in the past because they lost sight of our Lord Jesus Christ, the true and living God whom we worship, and followed after their own passions, and recreated God in their own image as an idolatry. Should we do good only to those who do good to us? Many people will never do anything for us. But that in no way releases us from the bond with Jesus Christ that calls upon us to do something for them. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit, the, the Apostle tells us. We are a temple of the living God. Our Lord Jesus Christ has said that he would take up his abode in our hearts. But when we allow our hearts to be filled with such darkness and such inhumanity, how shall the one who came to sacrifice his life for humanity take up his abode in such a dark and hardened heart? Be merciful even as your heavenly Father is merciful. The mercy should never be an act of condescension, of looking down on somebody, of thinking you're bestowing something special on someone. Mercy begins by recognizing what is in the fullness of your own heart, by knowing who and what you are, by knowing what things pass through your mind and lurk in your mind. If we wish to have mercy, to receive mercy, how can we not give mercy in equal measure? How can we not understand our brother and sister? First of all, by understanding ourselves and seeing the darkness within ourselves and yet the hope that lies within all. But our sins are above all the sins against the commandments of Jesus Christ. We pay too much attention to sin in a kind of vulgar and salacious way. We don't stop to think that the primary problem is not sin, but alienation. 
And this alienation comes about because we pursue our own passions, we pursue our own ego, we pursue our own self-love, and even our self-interest at the expense of other people or with indifference toward others. And when we sin against our brother or sister, we sin against the living God. We sin against the blood of Jesus Christ which was shed for that brother and that sister. For surely the person whom you hate is a person whom our Lord Jesus Christ loves. And if our Master loves that person, how dare we hate them? There's no room for any kind of hatred in the hearts of Orthodox Christians. There's no room for the judgment and condemnation that takes us away from seeing our own sins and our own failings. For how shall we repent if we see only the sins and failings of a brother or a sister? How shall we repent from the heart for our own sins when we're so busy looking to the sins of others that we cannot see our own? And how we become alienated first from God, from our neighbor, from humanity, and ultimately we become alienated from our own selves. And if we have an enemy besides Satan, it becomes our own self, our own person, our own ego. We need to think a little more seriously than what we see preached in so many places. They're not serious-minded when they scream and howl and yell about this sin or that sin or what's going on in the world or how we should be judging and condemning, how we should be hating. We see the terror going on by fundamentalist fanatics in the Middle East. And there's a temptation to hate and to fear everybody who's a Muslim. And to judge and condemn them out of hand. It's not even intelligent, let alone righteous. But what we can learn from seeing what fundamentalists and fanatics are doing warns us that fundamentalist and fanatical Christians have done the same, can do the same, and perhaps will do the same, and that we do not want to be part of that ourselves, but that we wish to be followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is peaceful and meek and humble <coughs> and filled with love and compassion. And if somebody wishes to remind us how Christ overturned the tables of the money lenders in the courtyard of the temple. Then let us remind all that we are a temple and that we need to overturn all of these vices and money lenders and greed and falsehood and hypocrisy and deceit that are in the courtyard of this temple, which is our bodies, the temple of the living God. But we must learn something from Christ's incident at the temple. It's that the temple was being defiled by greed, by self-centeredness, by self-love, by selfishness. And this temple of our body is defiled by exactly the same things. If we wish to overturn tables, let us overturn the tables in our minds. Let us cast out the money lenders from our hearts and grab hold of ourselves and say, I'm the one defiling the temple. Let me concern myself with cleansing this temple and let the Spirit of God cleanse the others. Pay heed to the gospel, brothers and sisters and to the epistle of Apostle Paul. And don't forget that our Lord Jesus Christ said, by what measure you judge, you will also be judged. Who does not forgive will not be forgiven. These are the sins that are so often forgotten 
while we worry about the sins of other people, of, even of nations, and never cleanse the temple so that the living God could come and take up his place in the temple of our hearts. We need to think more seriously about things like sin, alienation, and all these other things, and not simply throw words about. Brothers and sisters, let us resolve that as we are the temples of the living God, and as we're called upon to dispense mercy, even as we receive mercy, that God sheds mercy upon the unrighteous and the righteous alike, and that though there's a day of recompense coming, there's a day of recompense right now in this life. Brothers and sisters, let us put on the armor of faith and think more seriously and more deeply about things which people take too lightly and are too shallow about. Listen to the words of the liturgy and as we approach, approach to Holy Communion, Look within yourselves and see if perhaps there are not some tables, some money lenders that should be cast out as we approach for Holy Communion. If we're a temple of the living God, let us make a fit place within that temple for the living God to dwell and to speak. Amen.